What's up guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of these little model engines. I find it very fascinating. So in this box is a tiny little two cylinder, four stroke nitro engine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unbox it, show you guys everything that comes with it. We're gonna put it together and we're going to run it and we're gonna just kind of see how it runs, see how it works, kind of just go from there. And then in a future video, I'd actually like to try to do something with this. Maybe make a generator, maybe put it on like, I don't know, put it on something and try to actually use it. But in this video, we're just gonna put it together, test run it, and I'll show you guys the whole assembly process and give you guys my thoughts along the way. So if that's something you'd be interested in, make sure you stick around and check that out. So let's just go ahead and open it up right now. And then we're probably going to go into my hobby room where I have a nice big desk where we can actually build this thing because there's going to be a lot of little screws and stuff. Right now, I just want to open the box and just kind of see what everything looks like. And then we're going to go assemble it. Let's see what we get in the box. Looks like you get the instructions. I'm assuming these are the build instructions. Oh, wow. Look at that. Really good build instructions. So that'll be nice. You get your screw kit, screws and bolts. You get a nice assortment of tools. Oh wow, here's all the pieces itself. I guess I'm just gonna pull all the templates out because they're they're kind of inlay like this. So this looks like maybe a piston ring compressor and some other stuff. Put that there, or there's something on the bottom. All your gaskets, those are important. First layer, looks like we got a valve cover, a flywheel, or oh, that's the flywheel. This is the one-way starter gear, some cam gears, some bearings, some little, little baby rocker arms. Okay, the next one you get, you get, looks like maybe the bottom of the engine, like the bottom crankcase, your timing belts, Looks like your fan hub, more gaskets in there, some other stuff, and the last one. Okay, so here's your main engine block itself, your cylinder head, your starter motor, your pistons, little baby pistons, crankshaft, and your carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the block out, just kind of take a good look at this thing. Check it out, that's super awesome. And the piston rings are already inside the block, so you just have to pull those out when we go to put them on the pistons. Look at this thing, little tiny little valves. I can even open them. That is freaking awesome. Anyways, guys, this is what you get in the box. Get this thing fully built, that way we can run it. Look at that, tiny little valve cover. I'm gonna look at one of these tiny little pistons. Look at this thing, little tiny baby piston, tiny little connecting rod. And here's a GoPro for scale, in case anyone's curious how actually small this is. All right, guys, let's get to building. Hopefully I have the camera set up in a good spot. I'm gonna do my very best to record most, if not all the assembly. So maybe if you guys wanna follow along at home or whatever. So let's get everything open. I've already kind of done an unboxing and showed you guys what it came with. So we're just gonna lay everything out. Okay, we got all our parts, got our bolts, got our tools. Let's get to it, see what the first step is. Okay, it looks like we're gonna put the crankshaft together. Let's get to it. Crankshaft, it's already got the timing gear on it. That's what that's for. It's already got a bearing and it's got a front seal. So all we have to do is add the pen, the sleeve, that, that, and then the flywheel. Look at these little tiny pistons, little baby pistons. And real quick, if you're doing this at home, each number corresponds to a part. And then all you have to do is reference this chart here and it tells you what little foam thing it's in and what part it's referring to. So for example, 29 here, it's kind of hard to tell what it is, but if you go to this tray, it's right there, which corresponds to, looks like this little ceiling ring right here. That's kind of how you do it. If you're following along, the bearing on, put the seal on. Little pin. Okay, that little thing goes like that. This goes like that. Dark side faces out. Slide over the shaft. And that's what we're left with. So that's our one-way clutch to turn the crank to start it. And basically what this does is it locks one way to crank the engine. And once the engine's running, it can free wheel. Take our flywheel, same thing, put it on there like that. And we have this weird conical washer and then the nut. And I'm gonna go in the garage and use a big wrench to tighten this down because you don't want this coming off. But that's it, that's our first assembly right there. All right, next we're gonna move on to the piston assembly. So we have them right here and then we need to pull the piston rings out of the block. So I'm just gonna pop these out. And pretty straightforward, you take the piston ring and work it on your piston, don't scratch it. Try not to scratch it up. Just like that. So piston ring on there. I'm gonna turn this probably right there where the gap's at. Doesn't really say where you're supposed to do it, but that's where I'm gonna do it. Bam, just like that, easy peasy. Next you're gonna grab your piston installer. Right, it actually goes like this, I was wrong. So you put it like that, we're gonna put the piston in like that, drop it in and push it in. Before I do that, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of oil on both of these parts so they don't go in dry and mar anything up. So a little bit of oil on that, a little bit of oil on the tool. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of oil in these cylinders as well. It doesn't say to specifically do this, but I would probably recommend doing it. All right, get your piston in the installer like this and then just drop it in. And that's what you're left with. So I'm gonna go and do the other one, just like that. 
push down on the tool to put it against flat against the block and push the piston in. Bam, done. Just like a real engine. If you guys ever built a real engine, it's kind of the same thing. And I'm gonna wipe all this off, make sure there's nothing on this deck surface. All right, now we're gonna drop the crank into the block. We need to remove the rod caps. And then the instructions tell you there's a specific way to put it. So we're gonna pull those off real quick. Okay, now we're gonna get our crankshaft and go ahead and line up your connecting rods to get the crank to fit, like so. And you're gonna put your cam gear, this is the front of the engine, so make sure you put the crankshaft in correct and just press it on. I did go ahead and put a small amount of oil on there. It doesn't say to do that, but that's what I'm gonna do. Then you're gonna take the connecting rod cap, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt in and snug them up. And then when you tighten these, just evenly tighten it. Alrighty guys, so connecting rods are on, pistons are in, crankshaft is installed. Next, we're gonna put two gaskets here and we're going to install the lower crankcase right here with these six bolts. And then these are your lower crankcase bolts right here, these six bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig these out. And then here are our gaskets. So you just go ahead and place these like so on either side of the crankcase, yoink. Yoink, just make sure everything lines up. Oh, the hole's not punched out of that one. No problem. All right, there we go. Now you take your crankcase. This hole right here is gonna face toward the front of the engine. And I'm just gonna set this down very gently and get my bolts started. And once I get all these started, I'll go ahead and torque them down. And then the way I'm gonna torque this, I'm gonna start with the inner ones and work my way out. Kind of like you torque a cylinder head or anything else like that on a real engine. Bottom end is fully assembled. Now we're gonna focus on the cylinder head. Though it looks like a dual overhead cam engine in the picture, but it is just in fact a single cam. And then you can see the two holes there for the glow plugs. And then this is your exhaust ports. These will be your intake ports. We're going to install the camshaft. We're gonna put the buckets on top of the valves. We're gonna install the little rocker arms. And yeah, hopefully by then, once we're all done with that, the whole head will be assembled and then we can slap it on the block. This is what the camshaft looks like if anyone's curious. Smallest little baby camshaft in the world. And the instructions tell you exactly how to piece it together, pretty simple. So we're gonna take our screw box and find all the pieces we need. It's a bunch of little clips and stuff, so it should be interesting. Pin goes on, one C clip. All right, slide your seal on. Bearing goes on. First C clip, then the pin cam gear, and it's the one with the little cutout for the pin. Slides together like that. And there it is, that's our completed camshaft. Ready to put in the cylinder head, take your head, and it's gonna go in from this direction. This is the front. Gonna work it in there with that seal. There we go, all the way in, just like that. Now we're gonna put the other bearing and then the other C-clip here. Oh, there's also another seal. So put your seal in, take your bearing, put your bearing in. There we go, I got the other side bearing and seal in. Looks like they want us to go ahead and bolt the cylinder head to the block. And we have these two head gaskets. I'm not sure why it came with two. Maybe just ones as a spare. Put one on there and bolt it all down. And then before you do that, make sure your mating surfaces are clean. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe these off one more time. I'm very impressed with the machining quality on these pieces. I mean, as you can see, the machine work looks really, really good. Shout out to the Semto engine builders for building a good product. Take our head gasket, because it goes like about there. We have six head bolts. So I'm gonna drop two of them in the middle just to help kind of line everything up. And that's it. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get all six bolts started. Then we're gonna torque it in a pattern like this. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm gonna do that a couple times as I snug them all up. And then you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want to under tighten them. All right. So I'm gonna torque these all down. Head all torqued. So now we're gonna move on to putting the valve train stuff in the top of the head. So we're gonna be doing this step right here. Put our little tiny buckets on our little tiny valves, just like so. See the top of the valve there with the little retainer and the valve springs all underneath there. And the bucket is basically what's gonna, what the top of the rocker arm is gonna press on. Get a nice close up shot there. Put a tiny bit of oil around all these because in case they make contact with the inside of the cylinder head and those little wells. And I'm just dropping some oil on there with a zip tie. I'm just using normal engine oil. And then I'm gonna end up putting grease in here once I'm done. Okay, the rocker shaft's pretty simple. I'm gonna do like that and then put a C-clip. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of these parts and I'll show you all once I'm done. You put your C-clips on and that's what it should look like when you're done. All right, there we go, got them assembled and then these are the two bolts you're gonna use to install them in these cylinder heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap those on. So just like that. I'm gonna get the other one put in, put the two bolts in. All right, I am gonna put a small amount of grease right here on the cams, cam lobes, and then I'll put some on the buckets as well. Even though we put oil, we're also gonna put a little bit of grease. The oil from the fuel to lubricate the bottom end of the motor, but you're going to have to periodically lubricate the top. So just kind of keep that in mind. Put 
pack some more grease up in here. Make sure this is all going to be lubricated. Then we can put the valve cover back on. All right, guys. Oop. Looks like our next step is going to be putting on this. Looks like the carburetor support plate. So we're going to go ahead and do that, which would be this piece. And then here's the carburetor itself. Then we're gonna install this piece, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in so we can line everything up. Okay, I went ahead and torqued the carburetor mount. Now I'm going to install the carburetor. And all I have to do is add this little O-ring right here. And then the car will sit like, like that. I'm gonna put these two bolts in right here. That'll be a little tricky. It's kind of tight in there, but no problem. Okay, carburetor is completely mounted. Now we're going to mount the idler pulley that goes right here. So it's gonna consist of the pulley this little bracket Oop. and two bolts. So all you gotta do is take this, put it right there. Actually, this is what holds the fan hub, I believe. The pulley just screws in right here. It's already got the bearings installed into it, so you don't gotta worry about that. All right, the little bracket is mounted and secured. Now we're going to move on to putting the fan hub together as well as putting the timing belt. And as far as timing the engine, you're gonna put this mark facing down and this mark facing down. So as long as those two are face down and you put the belt on, it should be timed. I might just slap this on first, get the belt put on and then put the fan blades on. I think it'll be easier to manage this. In the package, you get two belts. The smaller belt is for your starter. The bigger belt is your timing belt. I've already got my marks facing down. I'm gonna go something like that. Mm, it's gonna be challenging to get that on. Okay, so this little piece right here can slide. So if the belt doesn't wanna fit, I'm just probably gonna slacken this, put the belt on, push this, and then snug these up to get tension on the belt. I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. So just keep that in mind. This can slide if your belt feels too tight. So see how the belt's a little loose still? All I gotta do is push this over and then snug those two bolts up and the belt will be tight. All right, the engine is now timed. As you can see, it moves the cam and everything feels nice and good. And then we're gonna go move on to putting the, we gotta put the exhaust pipes on and we gotta put the starter bracket on that holds the starter motor. Starter motor bracket, pretty simple. And this is gonna sit right, bracket's gonna sit right there. If you look at the instructions, this is one hole bracket. This one shows two bolt holes, but I assure you it's this one. It's just maybe a little bit different in the picture for whatever reason. And you're gonna use this bigger bolt in your nut and bolt kit. Put it on just like that. And then what's gonna happen is your motor is gonna sit like that. And then I just have to put the lock screw for the pulley on there, put the two bolts in the motor there, tighten that down. And then we're gonna put the exhaust on. So I'm gonna get all that tightened down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the motor here and here and then i'm going to space out our gear because it can kind of slide on the shaft and you want this to line up basically perfectly with this sprocket here and then while this is still loose i'm going to put the starter belt on Oop. there we go all right i think i got the belt tracking straight so i'm going to go ahead and tighten the pulley on the motor shaft and we can tighten this bolt here all right Upon closer inspection, it appears the motor mount through holes to the motor right here are actually slotted. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen this one, you're gonna loosen that one, you're gonna pull the motor away from the engine and that should tighten this belt up. Took me a second to stare at it and figure that out. Okay, much better, I don't think that's gonna slip. So, okay, so now we're done with the starter motor. Look at that guys, we're getting really close. Nice. I'm gonna put a little extra grease in here, put the gasket on, put the valve cover on put the exhaust on and then we're pretty much done with this thing. Now I have to make a stand to mount this on, but because this does not come with glow plugs, I need to get glow plugs. I need to get the harness in order to power the glow plugs and also to power the starter motor and some nitro fuel and a gas tank. So once we get all that, we're gonna put this thing on a stand and actually try to start it. The valve cover gasket and our nice anodized red valve cover. This thing looks pretty cool. There we go, snug that guy up so we're good there. Take our valve cover. All right, valve cover is on and torqued. So now we're just gonna put the exhaust on. I've already got the bolts and the gaskets in place. As you can see, I'm just gonna try to set these on there and tighten them down. Okay, that one's on. That one is on. We're completely done with this little engine. Let's see if we can't get this thing to start. Finally got some fuel. We're gonna run some of this 20% nitro. I also did go ahead and make a gas tank mount as well as some engine mounts. 
So now all I got to do is I'm going to get a piece of plywood and mount everything down. But as you can see, I have the tank well above the engine to facilitate fuel flow. I also got the fuel hose, the starter harness. So this has our glow plug igniters as well as our starter motor connections right there. And then all I have to do is connect a battery to this and hit the start switch and it should put power to the glow plugs and the starter motor. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this mounted on a stand, clean everything up, make everything look nice. And then we're going to take it outside and hopefully th see if this thing will fire up and break it in a little bit. All right, guys, here's the real simple mounting base I came up with just literally a piece of plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and take our little brackets on our fuel tank. I'm going to get everything secured, connect our fuel line up, try to make it look as good as possible. All right, guys, we are completely done with the engine. It's fully built. It's fully mounted. I got the wiring all kind of cleaned up. I think it'll work pretty good. So now we're going to take it outside, put some fuel in it, put a battery on it and see if we can get this thing to fire. I'm not sure if the carburetor is going to need any adjustments or not, but I'm going to bring the instructions just in case we have to make any fine tuning. All right, we're going to add our fuel, BP racing fuel, hopefully not make a huge mess. All right, guys, here we go. First start, I went ahead and pushed fuel into the carburetor, so we should be good there. Go ahead and connect the battery. Okay, that's closed. Oh, there it goes. right up. Dang, it runs pretty good. They got the tune on this engine really good. Look how easily this thing starts, you guys. Look at this. Alrighty guys, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of this little engine. I think it's pretty cool. And let me know what y'all think I should do with this as far as some projects, because I do wanna maybe try some things with this thing. And I wanna put some runtime on it and see how it actually holds up, see if it's actually durable and all that good stuff. It was a lot of fun building this thing. If you have like maybe yourself or a kid wants to learn how to build an engine, I definitely think these little model engines are definitely a way to do it. I mean, you have a running model, you know, that's kind of cool. You get to learn a little bit about engines doing it though. And I will leave a link to the engine and you guys can go check it out for yourself if that's something you're interested in. That's gonna do it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll catch y'all guys in the next one.